the song that I sang, um, Asoria there, um, is an amazing song that I actually got by, I went to Paris for an event and basically we just finished and we're just having rehearsals and I just, people that know me know that I like to mess around. So I was just messing around at the end, basically how, I wanted to say our church is, is fun, church is lit. And then I started saying Asoria there, Asoria there, Asoria there. Asoria for people that um don't you know come from Ghana and don't understand what Asori Ede means, Asori just stands for church. Yede means um, church is fun or sweet, if I want to translate it straight. And um, I say things like Saobema, which is like taking a song that's already there called Adonai, just talking about whatever God has said concerning our lives is what's going to come to pass. So, you know, because of that, church is lit. So it took like a year to actually record it and bring it up. But sometimes things that you may think is being delayed, it's just God's time. And so I want people to be able to have songs they can dance to, you know, when they go to their weddings, when they, they, they wake up in the morning, they go to the gym, you know. I'm trying to go to the gym but you know <laughs> um Emmanuel Swift is just I would I would say you know I'm a funny guy sometimes it's um some people get closer to me and when they see my funny side they're like oh I never thought you were like you were like this I'm like yeah well I don't reveal it to everyone you know <laughs> so uh, my friends know me like we we'll joke about it, and then when it's time for Emmanuel to go and minister they know that don't don't play about it. let's just go and do what we're supposed to do so for me i'm just a guy who's very passionate um to see people happy to see people smile i mean i can't make the whole world happy but at least the people that i can i'll do my best to, to do that because we're supposed to be the light in this dark world and that's all i want to be so in 2015 i applied to go on the voice and um the s factor now there are producer auditions before you get to the tv ones and everything so i went for the s factor i got a no rejected straight away i was like oh, but god i prayed about this and um went for the voice one was like a few days after go and know again i was like whoa so 2017 i went again s factor said um okay cool so i went through the producer auditions and on the day of the judges one um they said now we have to let you guys go because it's not enough time there's too many of you imagine months of preparing to get to that level that just took the wind off out of my system but a week later i had the voice audition i went for that as well and then a few i think two months later they emailed me and said sorry you didn't get through and that was so i remember in 2018 um i said to god i'm not gonna apply again i believe i'm meant to be on one of these shows but i'm not gonna apply again if it's your will let it happen so i was just home i think it was around april my birthday time when um i got an email my friend told me she takes on my email so she was like you got an email from the voice someone from the voice saying that you should come for an audition so i was like huh and s factor emailed as well so um but what people don't understand is i actually wrote the voice x factor and british got talent and stack it on my wall um because i believe in the scripture i met one of my friends that highlighted it to me the scripture that says that write the vision and make it plain you know so i put it there so every day i was seeing it so when the x factor and the voice approached me it was like two of the three um so i went for both auditions i didn't hear back from s factor but it was the voice people that called me back and obviously um got on the show and um the blind auditions, I mean, going on, on, on the blind auditions, you, you have so many ideas about, oh, is it real, uh, is it fixed, all of these kind of things, but it's actually real. You don't get to see the coaches before you sing, and you literally have 20 seconds before the band comes in. So I remember that 20 seconds felt like the longest two hours I've ever like stood on a stage, and the whole room was silent. So when the music started, I said, you know, God, I'm just going to give everything. So when I saw all four of them turn, I was like, wow what a journey from not feeling like I wasn't good enough to come into a place where Jennifer Hudson, amazing at what she does, turns for you. Well, I am amazing at what he does. Tom Jones tell, turns around and tells you that he turned to show respect to you because of your voice. Oli Merce, so much respect for my voice and, and so many things. So it, it, it's been amazing. And funny enough, around November, Britain's Got Talent also contacted me. They were like, oh, we want you to come on there. But I was like, sorry, it's a bit late. I'm on, on The Voice now. So um, it's, it's like everything I wrote on that wall came to pass. One of the reasons why I really wanted to go on a show like The S Factor or The Voice, um, obviously coming to the flesh side is an amazing show. You know, you see people on there, you see how stories and lives are changed. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to go on there. 
but as well i've always been someone that has always you know believed in the scripture where jesus said go out into the world and spread the good news you know lay your hands on the sick just heal people give people hope and that's one of the things i've always believed that the gift that god has given to me shouldn't just be within the four walls of my local church it should be spread around the world for people to experience it that's why you know when i went on the show i still stuck with my faith i still stuck with who i was and you know so that's one of the reasons why i wanted to go on and i believe that whatever god wants you to do he places it in your heart he places it in your spirit my, my pastor always says that look at the script within you that god has put inside you and live by that script so i believe it's like i remember when s factor failed in 2017 even my mom said oh maybe this is not for you and i said mom i know this is for me so i'm not gonna give up and the court and that she was smiling at the, at the end of the day. Hallelujah. 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 I'll say sometimes um you know, people have a certain perception that once you go on these shows or once they're seeing you on social media flying around the world and going, that's it, you've made it. But people have to realize that in this life, we're always learning even to your deathbed. So making it, what does making it sound like? Is it having a lot of money? Is it meeting new people? Is it being around influential people? For me, making it is about fulfilling my purpose. So the day I can say I've made it will be the day that I'm on my deathbed looking back and say i fulfilled every assignment that i was asked to fulfill by god and that's it you have iphone and you have android and other obviously phones but you have apple android now if your apple phone messes up you don't take it to android to fix it you take it to apple to fix it because they made the phone so they know everything about the phone so that means that god being my creator if there's any purpose that i need to know about myself i need to go to him but what's going on that sometimes people are going to other creations to ask about what they are supposed to do and the all the creation can only tell you if they are able to tap into the creator so you are supposed to look within you look spend time i mean if you have to take time out take time out we, we live in a time of social media and so much going on but take time out and seek god because it's very important the two most important times in a person's life is when you are born and when you find out why you were born so i'll leave that there <laughs>